It's preparing. You'll see the little Facebook live thing pop up. Oh, I see it. Are we on? We are, we are live. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can see it on my thing. Hi, Dream of Myth family. Welcome to week four of Ascension series. Uh, this week, we are going to be talking about capacity and just home. And so we kind of had this envision. We envisioned this life being just our home and you feel at home, like as if we're sitting on a couch together and having a conversation. So feel free to chime in on the comments. Me and Rachel are going to try to see your comments. And if you have questions or if you want to share your perspective on this season, um, just feel free to chime in. And we'd love to hear what you are seeing in this season. Um, but well, before we go into all of that, um, Rachel, would you like to pray us in? I would. Thanks, Emma. Okay. okay. God, I just pray for um, this next hour just to be a time of, of pouring into other people and a time of discovery and, and curiosity, God. We, we know we don't have it all together and, and we just want to share our hearts and um, what you've shared with us, God, with, with everyone else. So give us the words that you want us to speak and open our hearts to the message today. And in, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So today we really, um, as Emma said, we're on this kind of journey of talking about ascension and each week we've kind of had a different perspective. And so today we really wanted to talk about um, perspective and, cap and capacity and what ascension does and then also how that leads to um, not just a house, but uh, building a home. And so first we wanted to just talk a little bit about like the definition of ascension. And you probably again have heard other definitions, but um, we wanted to, you know, revisit this and, and put it into or frame it into what we're going to talk about this week. Um, so something for me that ascension, like that comes to mind when I think about ascension is the definition actually says the act of rising, um, which we know this is demonstrated in scripture of um, the ascension of Christ after the crucifixion. Um, but there was a definition that I found that I really liked, and it was the act of rising or a position of higher importance. And so not like hierarchy and not level of fame, but like of this idea of importance of what you're doing and what God has called you to do. What is, what is that stir up in you, Emma? What, what do you think of? I love like what you said about importance. Like, you know, I think every season we have this space where you know, it's just for us. And it like, it's like, it almost like, I'm like, I'm reminded of the phrase, like it fits like a glove, right? Mm. Like there is enough room for you to move around and to have capacity to do all the things that God is calling you to do in that season. And I feel like for a lot of people, and it's really cool to talk about and to think about, because as you have conversations, it seems like everybody is, is like gravitating towards this new space. And just I think it's like a refreshing in a sense like a refresh mm. like let's let's hit the button and let's see what we need now and what God is doing in this season and let's cultivate that space and that soil for us to actually yield the harvest right and to like plant the seeds and all of those amazing things and I think yeah, I just think about it like becoming a new home, right? Like we're mm -hmm. like we're just recreating a space that with a new perspective in in that sense. And I just I think that's really cool. So um, but I love like the level of importance because I think that we can be so attuned to, okay, like this is the space that I'm in, but we also can like oh like ascend to this whole nother space that has so much more in store for us and like it gives us more room to grow and to expand mm -hmm. and to really learn more things in our journey and allow that to be expressed so yeah. I really love that especially because you know we can be in our old space and it feel very crowded and mm -hmm. like you don't feel like you belong anymore because of that <laughs> like because it yes. just no longer fits your needs right so yeah that's so good that makes me think of <clears throat> um so every year um for a little insight into everyone watching that 
um, every year Dream Movement comes together on the first day of the year. And um, it always looks different, whatever we want it to look like. But it's just really a time of um, A, reflecting on the last year, but then B, really speaking into the that next year of what what do we want this year to be? And um, last year in 2022, the word, or this word of 2.0 um, came about. And we were all kind of like, mm, like, you know, 2022, like 2.0, like we kind of were like, I don't know what that means, right? And and that was, it was actually a really cool time of like this prophetic season, but also like, wow, like what is God preparing in us? Well, yeah. um, I want to share with you just a little bit of a prophetic story that um, that came to me that also really reminds me of this idea of ascension and what we're going to be talking about today. And yeah. So that 2.0, remember that, um, that was a theme throughout the whole year. Um, and then I started seeing it in a lot of my own spaces, apart from Dream Movement, which was really cool of like, wow, this really was a prophetic word for for everyone. And again, not just maybe Dream Movement people or not just me, but it was cool to see these prophetic words come together. And so um, throughout, the, throughout the year and the month, you know, everyone kind of would like forget about that word but then like as stories came up you started to see this trend of 2.0 of like what is God doing in every single one of our lives and so we went on a dream movement retreat um I in August and Paige you know took me over and was like you know I just need to I need to share something with you and we sat down and she reminded me of this this word this 2.0 and she said she was praying and she just felt the need to pray for um, attack poverty, which is um, where I am so blessed and honored to get to work. And um, attack poverty has been going through some shifts of just like building a much stronger foundation so that we can really g move into this, um, this transformation, basically catalyze more transformation and, and really what we're trying to do. Um, and so we kept saying this is a year of AP 2.0. And again, not even remembering the prophetic word of, of dream movement, right? And so Paige sits me down and she was like, I just felt so called to call or to pray for attack poverty. And she was like, it was weird. It wasn't for you or it wasn't for anyone specific, but it was again, just this general word. And specifically, she said that there's going to be a plucking up. And I just remember thinking, like, what the heck? And, you know, like, the first thing in my head, I literally pictured a chicken of, like, plucking the feathers or something like that. I was like, okay, Paige, like, I will I will go and I will keep, you know, praying on this and seeing what it is. But, and together we kind of, like, as we were just talking after that, it was, it came out that it was, again, it wasn't just for me. It wasn't just for Tech Harvey, but it was, like, this plucking of up of, anyone that like what God is doing so it was like this call to go to something higher and it was a call it was just so cool because it was a call for everyone to respond to like it's there if you want to respond to it if you want to respond to what God is doing and you want to be called to something higher then then God's going to make a way for you to do that and again it, it really changed my perspective of prophetic words right of like wow this is just something that anyone can respond to it's nothing that it's just for me or just for you emma it's really for everyone um and so yeah like that really reminds me of ascension today and i'm excited to just talk more about that yeah that's awesome yeah that that story reminds me of like you were saying a higher perspective you know mm -hmm. and I just think of like, you know, the elevated spaces that we're going to be in requires us to have an elevated perspective on everything because otherwise we're going to take in our old perspective and it's mm. not going to fit. And I think like, you know, there's just, it's just, it's hard to understand a space when we're looking backwards at a space that we're used to. Like, it's mm. so hard. Like you can't, you can't begin to like understand what is for you in this season with a mindset that was for last season, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, I just think about how I just like everything. And I think it's really cool because even in conversations I've had in Rachel, I think you even shared it with me too. Like people are getting raises, like, mm -hmm. like financial raises in their jobs at the same time. And it is so that it meets the their new uh like their new ascension right their new capacity to hold everything that God wants us to hold 
And I think it's just such a cool, a cool, like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's so cool because like, I don't it's have like God's words. responding. Yeah. Like God's responding to yes. like our obedience to go higher. Right. Exactly. That's, that's what willing- it makes me think of. Right. Mm -hmm. Our willingness to like even (laughs) want to go in that direction instead of just stay back. Right. Because I know sometimes we can just be so comfortable with, okay, like I feel like I'm living a life that I love or I feel like I'm comfortable. I feel like everything is going well. Right. But then, you know, there also is this level of, hey, like you you can reach another capacity and you can like only like continue to understand more things and be awakened to more things. And Mm. I think God sees that in our hearts and he really, he lets us go there and he guides us in that space, even though it can be super uncomfortable. And the transition is probably like so rough at times, you know, but I think what the cool part is, is like, it's kind of a bittersweet thing, you know, like we're leaving behind and we're grieving the environment that we were so used to. And we became accustomed to, which Mm. was, you know, a part of God's will, right? Because that was for our season. Mm -hmm. But now like, this is also a part of God's will, the uncomfortable transition and going into, okay, like this is your new environment. You know, it might be the same environment physically, but it's a new environment because you have a new perspective and you have new ideas. You have new, Mm -hmm. um, just outlooks on life and outlooks on yourself and God, other people, um, And so I think that like kind of overall, like just creates a new capacity inside of us that can hold other things as well. So, yeah. And you, you said something that, that made me think of like, cause I, I, in all of our preparation for this, I I didn't think of this, but (laughs) um, in that the, the scripture tells us that God will equip the called and, Uh and I never put the equipping with capacity building and, in every season because we can't just jump from here to here that will oh. never work and and, mm-hmm. and I I know most of us have done that right in some different capacity whether it's work right. whether it's your personal life whether it's a relationship like all of those things we do that and either we crash and burn yeah. or we like we feel exhausted we like we weren't equipped and we weren't taking those right steps with God in that we kind of just took our own little <laughs> Our own leap, right? Because God can do anything. And if he calls us to do the leap, then he will obviously equip us. But if we're feeling tired and we're feeling all of these things and things really aren't working, then we didn't take those right steps and we didn't build our capacity in, or allow God to build our capacity in the way that we needed for that ascension or for that new perspective, right? Yeah, that is so good. Yeah, it reminds me of, um, I don't know if, I don't think you said it yet. The the Luke verse that you have, mm-hmm. do you have it in front of you? Yeah. So I don't I don't have the actual verse, but it's, it's Luke sixteen ten. Okay. Um, of just talking about the faithful and the and the little things. Yeah, yeah, that's what it reminded me of. Like you know, when you're faithful in the small, like mm-hmm. God is going to trust you with even the big things too, right? Yes. And I think yes. about especially like the last couple of years. You know, we we're talking about two point for last year. I think a lot about just how it was so like, there were small things that we needed to be faithful in and maybe the spaces we were in weren't very comfortable or they weren't where we wanted to be. Um, I, I like, I just saw God like continue to just champion each and every one of us in those spaces Mm. you know like he was like you know what like you you don't have the capacity for this right now but you're in this space Mm. being faithful for me I don't need to speak to you because it would overwhelm you but I see your faithfulness right that's so good Eva and and, yeah because I mean I went through it with my own job and you know and I you know it was the job that I really loved right but it wasn't aligning with me anymore and I could feel the tension but I also, and you know, I was a teacher. So I also felt just like, you know, these kids, they like these specific set of kids really needed anything more, more than anything needed a teacher that was going to be consistent until they move into the next class. And so although I felt this uncomfortable feeling, literally January, I <laughs> felt it. I, the, uh, I guess the official semester ended in like May. 
but they also had a summer session that would stay with the same class and stuff. And so I stayed with them because, you know, these kids really needed it, you know, but like, it's in those spaces that, you know, you're supposed to be there, but it doesn't align with you fully. And I think like these past couple of years were like, you know, kind of doing things you maybe not wanted to do yet, or like, you just didn't feel like you had the, the ability, but now I feel like God is like, okay, you were faithful in the small things and the things that like you were aware of, but you knew at the same time that this was like my will for your life. And so I just, I see God now like accelerating everything. Like even like towards the Mm. end of last year, like I could see, like, I could see it in people's eyes when I talk to them, that things were going to come very instantaneously. And Mm -hmm. I feel that for everybody. I truly do. Like, I just feel like this is a year of acceleration of things just being more instantaneous than they have normally been because we were faithful in the Mm -hmm. small things. And yeah, so that just reminded me of what you were saying. And I think it's so cool. And I'm so excited for everybody because like, gosh, like God is just so faithful and like, he's just so good. And just he just cares about us so much Mm -hmm. and like he doesn't want you to fall on your face like he wants you to like be blessed with the abundance that he has in store like he has all I feel like he has like all this stuff in his hands and he's like here here like take it take it I want you to have it (laughs) exactly I want you to have it like please open your hand oh like like this like please open your hands wider yeah please step into the next in the next place because I have all of this that mm-hmm. only can be held when you're in the next space yes and yes. like he like we have to get there because he doesn't want right. he doesn't want it to be ruined so he has to wait he has to hold on but he's on that other side not like oh you know Rachel's not ready he's like no get there like yeah the biggest cheerleader like I exactly. can't wait to give this to you but I'm not gonna let either one of us ruin this so I'm gonna hold on <laughs> to it exactly <laughs> I mean, that, that makes me think of like, and this is going to be pretty counterculture, um, but of IG, IG42, which is, sorry, I say that. Let me, <laughs> let me backfill that information a little bit. G42 is a, um, it was a secondary program I went to about um, basically training and raising up leaders in the mission field. So really we focus on a lot about a, like, how do I love myself so that then I can understand that I was born to be loved so that then I can share that with other others so that that literal overflow of God's goodness but then also like how to disciple one another and what we learned through that is it in order to disciple others a you need to be you need to be discipled it's nothing that we know but I mean discipleship is building relationship and that you that comes from older generations we have to learn from these older generations which means well yeah like what does that mean practically so (laughs) the trend right now and this is obviously just my perspective but the trend right now is to get out of college and you're going to go make your six figures or your five figures Mm -hmm. right out of college and if if not or if you don't move up fast enough or you're not completely 100% satisfied with where you are in that job at that moment you leave that's what the trend is right now is like kids mm. or sorry, not kids. Um, <laughs> but college graduates aren't like the, they're moving every two years. And really the only reason they're making it that long is because if it's less than two years, it looks bad on your resume. Um, but mm. that's what the trend is now is everyone is just bopping around every two years and we're not building sustainability. We're not building mentorship. We're not building these discipleship, but what God calls us to do is serve others, serve mm. others first, learn how to serve others, learn how to listen in humility, learn how to just obey what God is calling us to do. It's not about the money. It's not about your position. It's not about or position in, in the organization. It's not about all what you have to offer, no offense, um, but it's it's about serving others. And when we serve others for this for these like beginning years, we learn and we absorb so much more that will take us so much further and will help us ascend a lot faster of, to where we actually want to go. Right. And that makes me think of my own job of like <laughs> some of y'all may know, this, but I was a business analyst of for the last year and a half and. Don't ask me what it is, because I, I don't know what it is. Um, and But I would tell people that, and they're like, and people who really know me, I mean, I have a, my mate, or I have a bachelor's in community health. I'm getting my master's in global health. of like, 
I don't know where business analyst fits into Rachel's like capabilities here. And, but it, at the end of the day, I was there for the organization. Attack poverty means so much to me and the work that we are all doing and building together is so much, it's so more important than what my title is. And I could have sat there and I could have been like, well, I need like, I have a, I have a degree and I need to do health or I need to go make health partnerships for our communities or whatever the reason is. But now that I reflect on that, I, I just got promoted. But now that I reflect on that, I don't think I could be in this position that I am now that fits me so well, that fits my passions, my skill set, my strength. Right. I had to serve others and I had to take those steps to ascend with God, not just to ascend on my own. Yeah. Um, so whew, that was a lot. But um, but I think Emma and I really want to show you too of just like the differences between our stories, but also the similarities of how and to really give you practical examples of how we can ascend with God and how we can do that. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think about too, like, you know, I love, I love that story and that perspective because I've heard so many like similar stories where, you know, people weren't where they wanted to be, but they had to be there so that they could get where they wanted to be. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. And so like, I think about, you know, the package that you typically receive is not the package that you envisioned. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's the biggest blessing that it isn't because then you learn so much more because you're caught off guard. You have mm -hmm. to end up grasping on something that is being shown to you rather than what you already envisioned in your head. Cause then you can already be like, okay, I already know that I get it. You know, that sort of, we don't have to rely on God exactly like it, it like it wouldn't matter like right yeah and so I think about too especially in this season like I get like and this is for every season if I am like totally in a new place and I feel like I don't know what the heck is going on I'm like mm. like I can't it's like I can't even I'm in this rut in a sense like I'm in this rut because I don't understand what's happening and I don't understand the feelings I have and it's just like a combination of everything, right? Like my spirit feels this, my heart feels this, my mind says this, <laughs> like, it's like all of these things aren't aligning because I don't understand. But the coolest part, I think we've talked about too, like in other conversations, like it's like this disoriented feeling, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like you feel disoriented because you're in a new place with an old perspective. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. only begin to ascend and really like understand that new space when you like kind of grasp onto okay god like please show me what the purpose is in this please just show me how yeah. to navigate this space right because you may walk differently you may talk differently you may just feel different in your own body because of the new space right everything just it feels the same but different I keep hearing that over and over again. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, like, I, especially in this first month of the year, like the first like two weeks ish, two and a half mm. weeks, I was like, I almost felt depressed. Like I felt, which was mm. interesting because everything was coming at me very instantaneous, instantaneously. And at the same time, I was depressed. I was like, how is it that like, I feel very down and very sad and very dark, but all of these amazing things are happening around me and all these wonderful conversations. And it was because I didn't have God's perspective on it. It's because mm. all these things were coming at me, new perspectives, new ideas, new everything for this season was just being downloaded to me. And I didn't really like comprehend like, okay, but how does this connect here? How does this connect here? And so I, it wasn't until I really grasped like what God was saying and what God is doing in this season, which I feel is very like, um, I feel like we were very other focused. And now like God is just teaching us to be not only others focused, but also like trust in yourself so that you can trust your abilities in what you're doing for others as well. Mm. And so yeah, I don't, I, and then I started thinking about The Chosen. <laughs> yeah, I know The Chosen. Oh, man, it's so good, guys. If y'all haven't watched The Chosen, please watch The Chosen. Um, but I, I, before we go there really quick, I want to yes, pause 
on something you said, Emma, that made me think of um, how you were saying you feel you felt depressed, but all these good things were happening. And and I wonder, was part of that grieving? Like, do you think that God was taking you through this like space of of since we're changing perspectives and since we're moving into a new place that we always have to grieve the old and oh, yeah. so that we can move into the new. And so um, I just wanted to stop there and, and say, like, it's OK to feel those things as well. Yeah. Um, it's OK to feel depressed. And even when God, you know, because. And sometimes you know, and sometimes you don't, but I feel like we always have a little bit of an inkling of Holy Spirit, you know, nudging us in certain ways and it can be hard and, and, but yeah, thanks for, you know, sharing those two, like almost this paradox of feelings and like how you're supposed to work with that. But yeah, um, no, so the chosen is great example because, um, well, okay, I'm, spoiler just a small spoiler um uh, I think it's like the second either the first or second episode of this uh third season that just came out but um of like the Jesus is sitting with all the disciples in Simon's house right and he's like okay it's it's your turn and people were like what they're like looking around and they're like I don't like you want me me to go heal I can do that and just like his words right there like yeah like, I give you the authority. It it yeah. was no, like, you know, induction into, like, Hall of Fame or any of this, like, huge ceremony or big, like, identifier, right, to do that. Right. But of, like, God's like, no, like, you have the authority. Go, go and use it. And you can see on their faces just how disoriented they are of, like, I don't know where to go. Who am I going with? How do I do this? And even, like, as the episodes continue – they're sitting there and like you see them as they're actually healing and they still don't believe it. They're still <laughs> disoriented, even though they're yeah. doing it like right in front of them, right? right? And so you can see how the disciple, even the disciples, right, are in this middle ground of ascending to a higher place. And it's funny because they even literally have Jesus right there, like tangibly with them, and yeah. they still feel disoriented. So right. I think right. that's a lot, that's like huge encouragement to us because. We can always feel disoriented because, right? Like it feels like we're talking at a wall sometimes. I know, <laughs> at least yeah. I feel like that sometimes. And yeah. you have to really trust where these disciples felt the same exact thing and Jesus was right there in front of them telling them that. And so yeah. it's okay to feel disoriented. That's a part of the process. I I would be scared if you didn't feel disoriented, if you're, go, if you're trying to go to a new perspective, especially God's right, perspective, right? right? Um, um, <clears throat> and it's actually, as we we're kind of talking about home and spaces now. And so, yeah, we, we kind of ascended to, we've done that weird middle ground of gaining perspective. Um, and now, but like, how do we build a home in that? How do we, how do we feel at home at that? Right. It's not just about the house or the building, but like, how do we feel at home in those new places or perspectives, but also within ourselves. And, um, another part of this whole year, like, again, going back to this 2.0 and um, all these transitions. And um, this last year, I lived with one of my best friends. um, And we had this whole dream of living in the city. And don't laugh at me, mom, you can do whatever. But um, and we found a great place. And we had a great year together. Um, And then some things happened where it was, honestly, I got so into my work and so into school and so into these other things, like, right, I didn't realize how much my perspective was changing and my needs were changing in in that season and so um I made the decision to to move out and but literally within three days and that's just kind of how I work um I make up my mind and I do it and so it was like within three days but it was it wasn't until God gave me this um gave me this perspective right so I was sitting there probably for about a month of just feeling like I really don't know what to do. I I don't feel comfortable here in this like space, not mm-hmm. like literal space, but like in my own space of like what's going through my head, what's going through my heart, what is God calling me to do? What what does he need me to do so that I can complete that, you know, ascension to that next level, level with him? And mm-hmm. it wasn't until I was like kind of at the, at my wit's end of like I really don't know what to do. And that's when I found out about almost these financial um, things that you mentioned, um, Emma, earlier of like, mm-hmm. because I was so faithful in this last year, um, 
I wasn't, I really wasn't making a lot of money. I was, but that thought never really occurred to me. I was like, you know, God got me, like I'm in the right spot. And so at like my wit's end, at this moment of that, I truly needed a new direction. I needed God to show me the the next step or the way out. And he provided that that promotion. He provided those financial things that I needed to move. Because that was really the fact that like moving really expensive and how was I going to do that? And, yeah. but he provided the money that I needed to, to make that move. And then, and so now it was like, oh, wow. Like I was able to move into a literal new space that you see right here. But also like, because of that is allowed me, like, I feel like, I reached that new perspective with him because of all of these other things, because of serving others, because of the discipleship, because of being faithful, because of being uncomfortable of where I'm at, but sitting in that uncomfortableness and showing God that I was like that trust in the small things that he could take me to the next level, that I was ready to take that next right. step. Right. So those are kind of my thoughts on like the house and the home, but in my yeah. talk to us a little bit about like the identity piece within yeah. all of this ascension. Yeah. And I think it goes along with, you know, some of the things that I, I'm sure you'll share at some point about like you moving into a new space. So like I have been talking to several people lately about just this feeling of, you know, making this environment a home. But when you think of home, right, we've talked about home being an atmosphere. Um, so it's not just a house, right? It's not just, okay, let me move into the house. This is a place for, to stay. This is a, sh a shelter, right? But it's a home is really like the, the vibes you put out, out of it, right? Mm -hmm. The manifestation of what is inside of your heart. So, right. So like I have this manifestation in my heart to, you know, just like show hospitality, right? So I'm going to show hospitality in multiple ways, right? Through decorating, through having people over, like all these things, right? So you create spaces like by making it like out of like, if you want a house or you want a home, right? And so like in general, like I've talked to several people about just the way that we are wired. You know, I kind of shared that I feel like this season is very much like a you focus thing like this is what I'm teaching you as you serve others or as you go and support as you go and give to this ministry like whatever it looks like for you I also feel this call to just do things that are not productive not mm. productive I guess you could mm -hmm. say because I feel like and the word that I keep playing around with is play mm. like what do you make like what type of play that do you do just because you enjoy it hmm. just because you're wired that way right like not everybody loves you know to play guitar or to play softball or to go watch movies right all of these things that are entertainment based right not everybody loves to do every single thing that's out there but there are people that specifically love it because they're like they're wired to love it mm -hmm. you know so you know whether it like i was just talking to a friend yesterday about like our brain is so wired to just gravitate towards the things that we really enjoy. And so mm. like, for example, like I love to play games because I love to see the way my mind works and to challenge my mind. And so I automatically gravitate towards the things that are going to challenge my mind. And so like I, we've been, you know, me and Jennifer, we've been playing softball. Like we played, went and played softball one time. It wasn't going to provide any financial outcome. It was not going to <laughs> like be deemed as successful, right? It was just simply because we enjoyed it and because it just felt like something that would refresh our souls in that space. Mm. And in turn, like it makes us feel at home because mm. we're doing things that we enjoy. And if you think about, you know, just your space of home, you feel safe enough to just let your hair down and do whatever it is that you want to do, right? As if, you know, whereas if you were with somebody else, right, you would feel like, okay, let's have a conversation because we're meeting. Mm. But when you're at home, you're really like, okay, what is it that I need in my own self? Do I want to watch a movie? Do I want to do a workout? Do I want to cook dinner? You know, like all of these things are stuff that, you know, may need to happen, but also like 
it's just for your mental health and your mental state mm -hmm. and for you to like fully express everything that is inside of you as your like your personal identity right we have like a full identity of you know being in christ and being seated in in heavenly places mm -hmm. but also there's this level of uniqueness about you that you have things about you that are so unique that if you don't express them <laughs> like you're going to feel like everybody else like you're going yes. to feel like you cannot be i guess i guess there's like it goes back to the level of importance right like a like a huge part of a home is you like you mm -hmm. are the one that sets the tone when you step into any space that you step into, yeah. you know? And so I, I, I've just been thinking a lot about, you know, your passions, your, the things that you just enjoy, whether you're just sitting and doing them or you're actually getting up and being active about it. Um, I just find that there's just this level of um, expression that brings life to you that starts to create that space that ascension space and you know you don't always think about those things being ascension because they're just natural to you and they're so easy and they're just you know they're just you know they're just fun right like as if you know a kid was just playing with a toy you wouldn't think like he's ascending right you wouldn't think that but actually <laughs> he's expressing yeah. you know he or she is <laughs> expressing herself in that space just through play and just his brain is working and you know, all of these factors are coming into play. And so it's no different with adults, right? Like we're playing in this space as children of God in the same, like in the same capacity. Right. And so I don't know, it just, it's just this, um, it's like just decorating your life, just decorating the environment, mm. the new environment that you're in with things that fill it with things that you enjoy, fill it with things mm -hmm. that are aligning with you in this season. You know, maybe last season you couldn't play very much. Maybe you couldn't, but have you thought about what it would look like for you to make that more comfortable for you and to really, I mean, maybe gain deeper revelation by doing the things that you used to do, you know, like just stuff like that. Um, and I'm probably rambling at this point, but that's kind of what my identity piece, but I would love for you to share about like, you know, what ways have you been able to express yourself differently as like after you've moved? Yeah, that's really good. Because as you were talking, I was just thinking about, yeah, like, how do these things connect to our identity? And, and it really is like God did wire us. I mean, we are so unique, even if both Emma and I um, love to watch movies, but we probably have very specific movies that actually give us more joy than maybe just watching any movie right and so there's like so many things in there that make us unique but <clears throat> I'm thinking about like when I do those things like what happens inside of me and like usually what happens is either my brain calms down because I'm actually doing so it's like all these other things just fall away but then it's like part of me becomes alive because I'm activating something within my identity that God put there that maybe I, like you said, haven't had the opportunity to activate or maybe just been asleep for a really, or maybe I didn't even know, right? Like I didn't even know I actually really liked to play or do a certain type of activity. Um, but it really does. Like when you, when you get these things aligned and you actually have this space to activate those things it really makes you come alive in a new way and what I think about is then the unique perspective that you give off of God because you do that and so now people are experiencing a different side of God through you that they may not have seen before because you're activating those really unique pieces of who makes you right um so yeah that great great little thing Emma, because that's what I got out of it oh <laughs> So yeah, my space. So I have always, being a twin too, I have always been like living with somebody else, even in the womb, right? Like I, I never, I've never really had my own space. And I love that. Like I love community. I love people. And I love, actually, I love getting to see other people in their home because you do get to see another side of them, like we've been talking about. And, um, and so in this last season, yeah, as I said, like, I've gotten really into my work and really into my school of, like, really, and really in this learning season of, um, I've been reading a lot, and I've really been, like, 
just sitting on a lot of things to see, you know, yeah, like what, how does God want me to use this information? And it, it came to a point where I wasn't getting that solitude that I really needed um, or was really craving, I guess, is, is a really good word for that, um, to let those things sit and to let those things essentially flourish with, with inside of me to, to figure out what, yeah, what's the next step of, of ascension, right? And so it's been, I don't even know if I can put words to this. I'm thinking about our other conversation to remember what I said, because <laughs> it is, it's been like this place of solitude of, in expression, like, cause I've never been able to decorate the walls how I want or, or bring out. And I have so many, I collect art when I travel. So I have so many pieces of art that I haven't been able to hang up. And now being in my own space, I can really express that and put those things up. And so now, I mean, it has just been a really cool time. It's only been a month, but it's been a really cool time. I'm like, when I walk in and I'm like, wow, like, this is my home. Like, I really do feel like that. And I feel like just this is a new place of solitude for me and God to really dive into these passions and dreams even more and play with them. Of And having a space to do that is just so important. And like you said, like even our bodies are, are a home or, or a temple. And so, but our bodies reflect the space that we're in. And so if you walk into a space that you know either you don't like the person or you know there's activities that are going on that you don't like or what, whatever it may be, you tense up or you kind of like th those walls come up inside of you where things aren't flowing. And so space is really a catalyst then for how we respond and, um, and what we do. And so, yeah, I don't even know that answers your question, but I'm still, I'm still uh, like seeing what, what it's going to bring because it is still so new, but of just this place. And I didn't use that word before, but this place of solitude is really what it's, what it's become like a little, my own little retreat. Yeah, that's amazing. And then you can just, you know, you're going to, as you get new ideas, Rachel, you will have this space to literally lay on your couch or lay on your bed or wherever you want to lay and just think about them right like maybe you're just staring at the ceiling you're like you're by yourself like who cares if you're staring at the ceiling who cares if you're pray? you know what I'm saying like yeah and, you know, not that we need to be ashamed of that at all like you know just sometimes being by yourself in that space physically is something that yeah just gives you that solitude that you've needed all along and mm -hmm. Yeah, like that's just so good. And I was just thinking too, like when you were talking about, oh, I was hanging artwork and, you know, I didn't get to do that before. Um, I was just thinking of like how every season typically, well, let's just say, let's talk about Christmas, right? Like Christmas, like you decorate for the season mm. and then you go into, you know, Valentine's Day and Easter and spring and like all of these different uh, seasons, like I think about, you know, we're elevating our decor to mm. inspire us into the season we're in, right? Oh, that's so good. Emma. Yeah. <laughs> and so like the things that you hung up, Rachel, and are all things that are going to inspire you mm. in this space, right? It's going to expand your mind and say, you know what? I never looked at this picture like I did just now you know, mm -hmm. and now I have the space to do whatever it is that God is wanting me to do with it or just express out of your own self. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just think about how our decor is. So it's just so telling, right. It's, mm -hmm. it's like an inspiration. Like you don't decorate just to decorate, like you decorate because it's inspiring. Right. And it, it creates that home atmosphere that you're really after. And oh, which is great because I, I always think about like as a kid, I remember um like my mom loved antique shopping. So like our living room was always filled with antiques and she would um like spend so much time in in remodeling them and really putting this love and caring for them. Yeah. And then we'll we would like add it to the living room. And I always thought I was always like, why are we always like change like, you know, like why are we always changing? But but that's right. great because it's like if we don't change or if we don't allow ourselves to change then we're going to sit in that same perspective and we're going to yeah. sit and it's not going to allow us to grow because there's not this openness um within that change right it's almost like we feel like it has to be this way and 
And I think about Christmas. I love that you use that because I think about Christmas and it's like, I don't feel like I'm in the Christmas mood until I have like yeah. the Christmas tree up or the Christmas music going on or all of those things. And it's like, wow, I wonder like Christmas wouldn't be anything like it is. It wouldn't be this like season that we all look forward to and we all are so excited about if we didn't have those things. So that we would be in the same perspective of the world and not in the Christmas perspective. I mean, it sounds kind of silly right. to say, but like, but well, that yeah. is that's a great example. Exactly. Yeah. It just, it like, just, it expands your mind to different things. Like mm-hmm. it, it, it just prepare, like, you know, we're talking about preparation. It prepares your heart. Like, you know, I'm going to decorate on this day for this season. Mm-hmm. And you kind of get into that space yeah. of, okay, this is the season for X, Y, Z. Right. And I feel like this season is no different, you know, with all of us finding that new footing in our new spaces, like, you know, set the tone for yourself. Like, how do you Mm -hmm. want, how do you want this space to feel? You know, do you want peace? Do you want your space to feel restful? And I'm not just talking about your home. I'm talking about your spiritual, like your, your spiritual insides, like the way that you're wired. What do you want to produce? Like, how do you want it to feel to other people? And manifest that, right? Because I think it's really important to think about, you know, like, do I want my work to come out rushed? Or Mm -hmm. do I want everything that I do to be first in a a position of rest, right? In a seated position, because then you can enjoy life more. Like, and it's not Mm -hmm. even going to just affect your outcomes, of things it's going to affect you as the person like Mm -hmm. it's going like we were talking about like you know the things that you do for play is brings you life you know Mm -hmm. you feel alive you feel happy and full of gratitude that you get to do these things still you know like it's not just the kid gets to do it but you get to do it too and so yeah I just think about all of those things like how alive you can feel in this Mm -hmm. space if you decide to rearrange things if you decide to set the mood and the atmosphere in the position that you want it to be in and I think when you start to like just and this this is the coolest part when you start to decorate and you start to rearrange and when you start to make things your home things will automatically flow to fill the space yes like and that, that's that instant, that's it, that's that instantaneous thing that we're talking about, right? Like things are going to come very quickly and it's because you're setting this new atmosphere as your home, as your resting place to, to come back to, you mm-hmm. know, if you, you go outside, not that you don't take it with you, but just, it's like a centering in a sense, right? Like this is where I'm centered and grounded and everything else flows out of it. But if you have that grounding, that just that safety in that space you begin to like exude everything out of it so beautifully like very effortlessly yeah. is the word I keep hearing too <laughs> um so yeah just like without force yeah and something that you said remind me of like we always have to fight for it um and I think all of our like what we've been talking about for the last hours kind of seems like it's been not easy but like that it just kind of happened naturally but these are all things that you have to fight for um and I and to keep going on the Christmas illustration of like Mm -hmm. you never like you're thinking like Thanksgiving just happened you're like oh man I have to decorate the house I have to get it all down from the attic I have to do this I have to do that and it's like Mm -hmm. in your mind just almost spirals out of control right like oh I have to get my kids the the teacher's gifts I have to do we have to plan for this party we have to have and then it goes into New Year's and um and we could just sit there and be like oh you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do any of that Christmas stuff this year and then and but no every single year we fight for that and every single year we get through it right and and then we we forget in the Christmas season we even forget about all that like fighting because we hit the goal of this alignment of like, yes, my spirit is ready for Christmas. My spirit is ready to experience um, God in a new way. My, my spirit is ready to just kind of mourn and and celebrate all the, like mourn the last year, but then also celebrate Jesus's birth. And like, what does that mean to the next? Like all these things, right. And that wouldn't happen if we didn't fight 
for to prepare our hearts and to prepare our spirit in that right. season. And, and I think about COVID in that sense of like COVID hit so quickly and no one knew what to do. And so therefore our spirits didn't know what, like we just kind of sat there and we were, but we were told to sit there and we were told to like put everything on pause. And in that moment, you had to fight. And to this day, we still have to fight for our, our joy and our happiness in the midst of what it, the lingering effects of COVID and new things like new COVID variants that are coming. I mean, there's always going to be these waves, but, but through that, we've learned how to prepare ourselves. Like, right. We know, okay, if I catch it, you know, I got to stay inside for five days. I got to do this for work. I'm going to, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And our students are like, ready. Like, okay, we're, we're good. We know how this goes. But at first, that's why like the world was experiencing depression and, and anxiety and all these things because we didn't know how to prepare ourselves we didn't know how to fight for that right so I mean that kind of kind of leads us into our like our last thoughts right I'm kind of just rambling on that um, oh you're good like I think my final thoughts would be um to sit in the uncomfortable and to sit in whatever that tension you're feeling because if we sit in that God will reveal those next steps or God will reveal maybe a little or just ask him all he wants to do is just ask him just ask him the next step you know I I see when we sit here and we're like yeah God will do it I'm like just ask him you don't have to wait um and and he'll he'll reveal it or not but it all be his time right. but you know um of like just ask him okay if you're feeling tension at work like do I leave do I stay maybe you love the organization but you know you can't afford living essentially with that pay or Maybe there's a coworker that's giving you problems, but sit in it and ask God, what is this long-term for you? Or maybe you do need to move and that's okay, but Mm -hmm. sit in it and and ask him, don't just assume and take it into your own knowledge. Because if we just use our own knowledge and our own, our own feelings, our own emotions, we're never going to, to ascend and we're never going to get onto God's perspective unless we truly ask for it. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, I was thinking about when, and I guess we'll start closing out now, but I uh, I was thinking about when you were talking about Christmas again, and mm-hmm. even going back to your plucking thing, mm-hmm. like you're plucking for your, for attack poverty. I was thinking a lot about, you know, we don't keep, so let's say Thanksgiving was just done, right? And Christmas, we're decorating. You don't keep up Thanksgiving decorations Mm, for christmas mm -hmm. right you are taking you're plucking off the 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 thanksgiving decorations Mm -hmm. and you're setting in new decorations right Mm. and so if you keep so it goes back to perspective yeah if you keep both perspectives you will always stay confused Oh, that's so good, Emma. You that, will say, so what right. season yeah. is this? What, yeah. what am I celebrating? What am I go. supposed to look yeah. for? Exactly. And so oh. you need to pluck your, not that you don't keep what you, you know, like the lessons you've learned, the, mm-hmm. the wisdom that you've gained, not that you don't keep that, but you have to let that go, like release it and just keep it in the back of your mind. Right. Mm-hmm. And really start to start to understand this new space fresh anew and um I just think about too like this season has been such just revelation for the things that align with us and you know the things that need to stay in our environment the things that maybe need to refresh right we need to reevaluate um maybe how we use those things or those relationships like all of these things right we maybe need to just you know some of them we keep some of them we reevaluate some of them we release and it, it's all a part of the new ascension that you are in the new space that you're in the home you're creating and you know not everybody creates a home like let's just say I, I, I think about this all the time and I laugh at myself because I put things <laughs> in my wish list for for my home and I'm like what was I even thinking <laughs> like this is so ugly like I'm like what is happening <laughs> and so it is just hilarious to me because like I literally put that in my cart like a month ago but my my <laughs> like my mind has already changed what I want my space uh-huh. to look like you know mm. which is kind of toxic when you start buying stuff but you know <laughs> it, I, don't, I don't buy it it normally goes in my wish list but it's just so funny like how you know 
when we start to ascend into new spaces, we start to crave other things and that is okay. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, leaving things that I know that's super uncomfortable and, you know, it's such a journey for you to leave and release anything in life. Mm -hmm. And there's that, that source of grieving, grieving that comes with it, which is so beautiful too in itself. But like that uncomfortable space that you're talking about, Rachel, is necessary so that you can start to become comfortable again in this new space and in this new groove of life because you know that's where everything is going to flow from you know it's not Mm -hmm. just the old it's now like hey you're new like this is a new space you know um so yeah that's what I was kind of thinking of when you said that oh man that's so good I love that I love that if if you keep both perspectives you will remain confused and disoriented and it's like if you want a direction, you need to, yeah, I love that you said, like, let go of the past, like, keep those lessons that you learned. There's right, a point right. in why you went through that season, but don't, don't keep living in the season. Take it, take those into a new season and mm-hmm. actually translate that into that new perspective. Don't just sit on yeah. these lessons learned and wait for an opportunity to apply it. You can always be applying it. You can always be changing exactly. your perspective. Oh, yeah. that was so good. So good. Oh my gosh. Do you have anything else? I think we're pretty much I think done. that's about it. I think that's about it. Okay, great. I'll pray us out. Um, and yeah. <laughs> Father, I just thank you so much for this Ascension series, for the, just this Ascension space that each of us are in. Um, I thank you for how unique you have made each and every one of us to be. And I just see us just finding so much joy and you also finding joy in us just Mm -hmm. learning how to play and to Mm -hmm. create out of the space that you have given us. Um, I see us just multiplying and uh, just expanding what you've given us in our hands as a baseline uh, and a foundation that we can continue to build off of. And I just thank Mm -hmm. you for just those spaces that, you know, used to just be so simple and and full of enjoyment. I thank you that they're not only that, but they're also full of purpose and full of expression Mm -hmm. that is so needed in this season and beyond. Uh, I just thank you for this life that we have. Um, I just, I'm so filled with gratitude and I, I just thank you for just trusting us with this new space, with the transition, with all the feelings that come with it. And I thank you for the continuous revelation and gifts that you have been giving us in, you know, in only just January, but and beyond. Like, I just thank you for how instant you are making things become. And maybe even for the things that are taking a bit longer than we expected. I thank you for those spaces. I thank you for the process, God, that you have taken each of us through and continue to guide us in. Um, and I just pray for our mindset to be completely just filled with your perspective and just new revelation and fresh slates clean. Um, and I just thank you for your love and for the way that you just desire us to just have so much fun and just have, just really create heaven on earth here. Um, and so I just thank you for all of these things. I thank you for each and every heart that is being expressed. And I also pray for the people that are still stuck in those spaces of Mm -hmm. just feeling very down and very blah. I just pray that you would just show them the light and that you would continue to guide them and just help them walk in that space, uh, and help them find their groove. So yeah, we just thank you so much for um, the ascension that you have gifted us with in this season and we don't take it lightly we love you amen amen we yeah. will see you next time everybody. yes have a great week uh make sure to keep an eye out for all the amazing things that are coming up in february and beyond we're going to be meeting a lot more and we're going to be partnering with another organization and so we just yeah just keep an eye out for all the fun things that are coming up and we hope you have a great week <laughs> Love y'all. <laughs>